And tonight on PM Express, a conversation about demanding accountability on good governance versus responsible citizenship. By now, you may be aware that a planned demonstration to protest against high standard of living turned violent as the charged crowd clashed with police officers. The demonstrators were protesting what they term as bad governance corruption and insecurity among several concerns. But the question is, how responsible have they been demanding accountability? Let me share what the current situation of our living standard is to set the tone for the discussion. And of course, demanding accountability. They have asked for two days to demonstrate over what they say is Chrome Ayeshi demo. Now, today is day one. What happened? Uh, at day one we've seen a lot of issues coming up now uh, we've seen police uh, cars being destroyed we've seen policemen being injured you will see in the picture there there were some demonstrators who were also injured though um, but most of the policemen were injured you can see them there what are the demands of the demonstrators? Withdrawal of the controversial e levy, total abolishment of the Japamino royalties deal, return of the state lands grabbed by public officials, payment of allowances to NAPCO recruits, among other trainees, immediate slashing of government spending, reduction on public borrowing, and reduction in the price of petroleum products by scrapping those taxes. Now, if you want to look about key issues, you want to look at key issues affecting living standard, you want to talk about inflation. Now, you look at inflation between May 2021 to May 2022. This is how it looks like. May, in May 2021, uh, we had 7.50%. Uh, and then in June 2021, 7.80%. July. 9.00%, August 9.70%, September is shot from 9.70 to 11.60%. Now in October, it came down to 11. November 12.20, December 12.60, January 2022, it shot from 12.20, 12.60 .20 to 13.90%. Between January and February, it shot to 15.70%. And in March, April, May, you can see that it's been very high. 19, from 15 to 19, from 19 to 23, from 23 to 27.60%. That's where we are in May uh, with inflation figures. Now, uh, this is a breakdown of what informs or what the drivers of inflation are. And you have it here. If you look at grapes, year-on-year uh, -year inflation, 100.8%. Look at diesel. You know, diesel used to be cheaper than petrol. At some point, they were at par. Now, diesel, is, uh, diesel price is higher than petrol. So you have it at 81.1%. Look at petrol. It's following closely at 62.0%. Now, talk about food, maize, and then it's at 61.2%. But look at watermelon. Watermelon is fruit, it's 73.2%. Then you come down to washing soap. It's something that every household uses, 59.9%. And you have it, charcoal, wheat flour, avocado, vegetable oil at 53.4%. And so these are the drivers of inflation look at current price build up from 16th to 30th june average fuel price trend analysis and it's between 2015 to 2022 and we start from 2015 this is how it looks like petrol and diesel um diesel is at 2.77 petrol 2.64 2016 um diesel at 3.67 fuel at 3.67 2017, now they are at par. What I told you earlier, diesel is 4.46, petrol 4.46. 2018, 4.93 for diesel and 4.93 for petrol. So they've been at par for some time until 2022 May and 2022 June. And then you see that now 
diesel okay it's at 10.05 petrol it's at 11.13 look at it again in june 2022 diesel is 10.99 and petrol is 13.5 these are the drivers of inflation now the current uh, price build up and remember the uh, demonstrators are asking that some 12 levies on petroleum should be removed what um, forms those 12 levies energy debt recovery levy which forms 49 pesos energy fund levy 48 pesos price stabilization recovery levy 16 pesos sanitation pollution levy 10 pesos energy sector recovery levy 20 pesos Special petroleum tax, 46 pesos. Primary distribution margin, 8 pesos. Bost margin, 7 pesos. For marking margin, 4 pesos. Marketers margin, 46 pesos. Dealers, retailers, operators margin, 31 pesos. It all sums up to almost 3 cities. 2.2 cities, 84 pesos. That's what's making up of the... Uh, that's what makes up the 12 levies on petroleum. Now, Ghana's total debt stock, remember the demonstrators also talked about that. And if you want to do a comparison or a comparative analysis between 2021 May to 2022 March, this is what you have. And you can see the trend that from between 20, uh, January 2022, February 2022 to March 2022, the gap has been very wide. So you look at 351.7 up to 372.2, then 39.19, that's where we are right now. And this is what they are asking that it be reduced. So the question is, are citizens demanding for accountability responsibly? This is going to be the trust of our conversation. Let's have a conversation after this break. Many thanks for uh, uh, staying with us. I've been joined in the studio by uh, Bernard Mona, who is a member of the Arise Ghana group. I've also been joined by Fatima Abubakar, who is Deputy Information Minister and a lawyer. I've also been joined via Zoom by uh, Professor Kwesi Enin, who is a security analyst, Dr. Kwame Asa Asante is a senior lecturer, Department of Political Science, and Dr. Patrick Esuming is a development economist with the University of Ghana Business School. Grateful, uh, lady and gentlemen, for your time. I'll begin straight with you, uh, Bernard Mona. Do you agree that your organizers today handled your event poorly? I am scandalized that President Takufado will allow his violence to infest the Ghana Police Service in the magnitude that it happened today. How? We've always known President Akufado as a violent person. He has demonstrated this by the what? many attacks that he has w launched. What's the evidence? By the many attacks that he has launched on even media persons in this country. Some he, of them he died personally through his agents and assigns as he used the Ghana Police Service to achieve today. The Ghana Police Service is an independent body. You How can the president be You will be permit me them? because the IGP, for instance, is an appointee of the president. And I had occasion to speak to the IGP. After I listened to the command instructions he issued this morning, I called him to commend him and to tell him that we on our part have also spoken extensively with our people and that everything we are hopeful will be fine. Mm. I got to the grounds around 11 a.m. and around 12, 20 thereabout, a team of commissioners of police arrived led by C.O.P. Yohunu. Mm. I saw the Greater Accra Regional Police Commander. I saw um, Commissioner Doku. I saw Commissioner Habiba. I saw Commissioner Awini, and all these came and they told me that they wanted to have a meeting with the leadership. 
Then I said, no problem. But I was the first leader to arrive. And so I took a walk around to see if everything was in place. Okay. So I will call the other leaders and we'll meet. But where do we meet? And we both, myself and the police, agreed that we should meet inside the Kwame Nkrumah Amusement Garden. They have some offices there. Okay. So I called my other colleagues. When those colleagues came, in fact, before they came, about 20 minutes, I walked to them and said, my colleagues will be here 10, 20 minutes. Mm. And they said, it's all okay. They got to us, and then we walked to the police. And I noticed that the crowd was surging. So I went trying to push some of the protesters and say, give the police way so that we can have a meeting with them so we can come and attend to you. Mm -hmm. Some ones of the police officials were wearing clothes like this. Mm -hmm. I didn't know they were police officers. Okay. So when I said, please go back so that these officers can go up with them, they told me right in front of the police, this was not in camera, this was open, that they are police officers and they are protecting their bosses and pointed to Yohunu and those who were standing there. Mm. Police officers wearing a rice Ghana t-shirts. How did they get it? I don't know. Because some are on sale, by the way. Okay. And so... I said, okay, if you are officers, I cannot <laughs> give officers command. So, commander, I leave them in your care. So, I tell commander, if these are your boys, I'm moving. So, I went to where our people were and said, give way. Mm. We managed to secure passage. So, we went up to have our meeting. Mm. And what was it? What time are we starting? We said, we'll start in an hour. And we'll take through our route. But since the police are insisting that we should not go to the Flagstaff house, mm. we will not go. When we get to Akwaji, we will turn towards the ministries, terminate at the ministry's um, taxi rank. COP Yohunu picked his phone and placed a call. Mm. It took him about five to ten minutes. We were all waiting for him to finish the call. When he finished the call, he said, it will not work. I said, oh, so whilst you are here, you are taking instructions. Okay, if it will not work, we have nothing to do. We are going. Mm. So we got down and we moved everybody into the amusement garden. Okay. And we started addressing them. After that, myself, Totobi Kwachi, Asie Dunketia, mm. and I think Ofusu Ampofu, we decided that we should walk to go up and see what was happening. When we got we noticed that the police had placed barricades. As we were approaching, the police went on top of the vehicle and started aiming at us. The boys around us started pulling me back. Don't go. And I said, I don't know why they are doing this. So when they started shooting, somehow those rubber bullets fell short of getting to us. Mm. So I said, okay, let's go back. So I even broke the... You know, they called on us. The, 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 we had our own security. Yeah. So I broke the chain. I went under and went out and said, everybody retreat. Okay. So we all retreated towards the Kwame Nkrumah circle. Mm. We decided that moving around the circle was sufficient. Mm. The police say we will not go our way. Using their route, we will not go. Mm -hmm. So we were there. Okay. So I said, no. Whilst we were there, the protesters were accusing us that we were too dull, that they want to go to the police. Then I said, no one is going there. So we decided that we should address the crowd there and there. Mm. Once we started speaking, people will crowd around. Mm -hmm. Before we could say Jack, these police officers started surging on us, shooting into the care track that we were speaking in. Mm. Ofosu Ampofo had finished speaking. Okay. Res Umar had spoken. Other leading members had finished speaking. The drivers for change had all finished speaking. So it was virtually left with myself and I said Ketia to speak. Toto Bikwachi was standing by the care. Okay. So when they started shooting, <laughs> I say this and people laugh. I don't know where I see Ketia learned his taxes from. <laughs> he just dived inside the Kia and laid down flat inside the Kia. Okay. <laughs> Toto B was trying to move towards the police to find out where this madness was coming from. Mm. Then his bodyguard pushed him to the ground because the people were coming with such ferociousness. Mm. So they pushed Toto B onto the ground. Mm -hmm. See, so, so when they pushed Toto B onto the ground, I said, okay, 
Then I noticed that they bundled Totobi to take him away. Okay. So I decided to jump out of the Kia. Mm. Baba Jamal yeah. was around. Mm. So Ofosu, powerful in his attempt to jump, his shoe got held by the one of the distances on the Kia. Mm. He fell mm. from that height. Okay. So when he fell and a tear gas landed there and exploded. Wow. Right in his face. Wow. So these boys were pushing me to get away. Then I said, no, of course I'm off his head. Let me go back. The boy said, no, let us secure you and come for Ofosu Ampofu. Mm -hmm. So they took me to the far end and came back and picked Ofosu Ampofu towards my direction. This is towards the Ghana Telecom side. Okay. We stayed there for a while. The police started coming there too. Well, I'll um, hold it for me. Let me bring it up. I, I moved into the trot trot, this lorry park. Okay. They were shooting into the crowd. I moved all the way. You know that place? All the way to New Plan. They were shooting into the New Plan station. Okay. Let me bring in uh, Professor Kwesienin. Uh, Prof, what do you make of how the police reacted to the alleged pelting of stones by the demonstrators? I've been in meetings that I've been preparing for my speech on Melton's 10th anniversary. So, I mean, I've been totally... So, I don't know. I mean, I, I've just been listening to what the, the previous speaker has been talking about. I mean, I, I've not been in a crash. I left a crash sometime early this afternoon, and I've been sequestrated in my study, uh, putting the final touches to my uh, to my speech tomorrow. So, so I don't follow this thing at all. Hello, Prof. Yes. Hello. Yes. So, um, I mean, if you look at what has happened this afternoon, yeah. Uh, do you think that the police has learned anything uh, from previous um, events as far as crowd control is concerned? Well, I don't know what has happened, but let me make a couple of, you know, principled statements. One, I mean, when people decide to demonstrate, well, I think I've heard about people or a group wishing to demonstrate and some statements about it's only death that will stop them from demonstrating, all kinds of stuff. But when people want to demonstrate, and please correct me and the uh, guest in the studio, whether there was an agreed, um, I mean, a permit was sought, there was an agreement as to the route to be taken, and if those very basic things were done and the police were there to provide protection, if they were done, um, then I don't see where the trouble came in. If the demonstrators decided not to follow the route as agreed, then that could potentially pose uh, trouble. But the, <clears throat> the preparation towards this demonstration the application to start the demonstration at the at 10 p.m. I mean, that in itself, to me, raises some fundamental questions about what the demonstrators sought to achieve by starting the demonstration at night, uh, whether there would be, I mean, mobile, you know, uh, plague lights to ensure that, you know, people are protected, blah, 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 blah. You know, so if they followed established procedure and then the police started shooting from what I was hearing, then that is wrong. But if they didn't follow established procedure, then the police have a right to ensure by using appropriate force, you know, that um, that lives and properties are not destroyed. So these things don't just happen out of the blue. Um, but I'm wondering, what's the justification for not actually uh, following the routes or changing the routes when the court had clearly given you routes to follow? We, we, we wrote to the police notifying them of our intentions to demonstrate on the 1st of June. Okay. 
Today is what date? 28. 28. How many clear days did we give them? Mm, 27 days. 27 clear days. Okay. So if there was any security thing, the police cannot use 27 days to organize themselves. Mm. We said we wanted to do a 48-hour non-stop demonstration. Mm. The IGP, when the Greater Accra responded to us that they would not allow a 48-hour, and we pointed out that that is not the law. You must justify why you cannot, but you don't have right to determine when we do our demonstration for how long. Mm. So the IGP instructed that the discussion should be taken to his office. So we met in his office on the 6th of June, and on the 8th of June, we met again. And it was on the 8th of June that they asked us to go and rewrite about the agreements we have reached, which means that we will no longer demonstrate over the night, but we'll close at 10 p.m. Okay. And that they wanted that we should write referring to the discussions we had. We wrote back to the police on the 8th. Okay. On the 13th, they wrote back to us, thanking us for the cooperation so far, and this is what they expect from citizens that so far we have demonstrated that we are willing to work with the police. Mm. And they were still making an appeal to consider the time 10 p.m. Okay. And we we're busy. As you are aware, we we're doing community engagements. So I told them that, look, we have done what we have to. We have overcompromised. We will not sleep. Then on the 20th, you called me and said, you have a letter for me. I said, no problem. Let me see the letter. When you brought out the letter, you were telling us that, look, because we have not responded to your 13th June letter, you will be going to court. On the 22nd, I sent a team to meet with you in the office of the director of operations. The team and the director of operations all agreed, that was just last Wednesday, mm. that the demonstration can terminate at 8 p.m. Mm. in front of the traffic light around the Christ the King intersection. But the court gave you 4 p.m. Wait, this we are talking about Wednesday. Okay. So on Thursday, you ran to court. Okay. After this agreement, mm. you ran to court. Then Thursday in the evening after 3.30, I get a call. I had ordered for some online things. So I thought it was one of them who was coming to okay. deliver. So I directed them to my base in Osu. When they got there, I had left the place and I had actually gone to the bank to transact some things for my farm. So I was at the bank when they called me. So I sought permission from the manager to pick the coin. I said, somebody's coming to deliver something. When they came to the bank, I met them outside, and it was a bailiff. Okay. And I said, so you are the bailiff who was telling me tomorrow, which is Friday. Mm. So no problem. I took it. Then I realized that they sued Arise Ghana and sued Bernard Mona. Mm. <laughs> I signed letters for Arise Ghana. I don't act in my own capacity. But if you choose to single me out, no problem. I will let my lawyers deal with it. Go and look for Arise Ghana and write or serve them. Okay. So they served me. On Friday, only one day, my lawyers started their response. Our affidavit in opposition. On Monday, when my lawyers got to court to check, because the document they gave me was incomplete. So it was my lawyers who found out that they would move the motion on, on the application on Monday. Okay. So Monday, they went to court. Mm. At court, the police were there to say that they were not ready to move the application. Okay. The judge asked why. They said, no, they have to file supplementary uh, affidavits. And because of that, they wanted the court. Then the court said that. But the demonstration is taking place on Tuesday. You have come Monday. You are the applicants and you want to move. So that tells you clearly that all this while that we're engaging with the police, mm. the police are something sinister that they will not tell us. Mm. So you go to court last minute. Then they just said, okay, as a compromise, since we are using terrorism as the basis, she fears even the word terrorist. Okay. So she doesn't want to hear about it. So we will terminate you at 4 o'clock. Okay. We said, we are grateful, but we disagree with your judgment. We will appeal. We appeal and file a state of execution. When they were to serve the police, the police said nobody should receive anything from anybody. Okay. When I willingly agreed to receive your sermons, you are refusing ours. Today you came, and we are telling you that, look, let's not make anything out of this. We are peaceful demonstrators who want to tell our government that the level of economic depreciation mm. 
is unbelievable. But once they they did not take, they've not been so they have every right not to no problem. Abide so we were with them. So we spoke to them. When we spoke to them, I can tell you that the five six officers that were with us this afternoon seem to be in agreement. Sylvester Manson was there. Some Wulomers were there. Mm. So you did you change the route? So we agreed with them there, and then after they received the call, they told us that it will not work. So you agreed on a different route we, that will come through what the court that will ordered. come through the Nima police station. Okay. Instead of going to when we get to Akwaje, instead of going to the Flagstaff House, which is of a major concern to them, we will turn to the ministries. Mm. But what then after you... they received the call, COP Yohunu received the call, passed it to Awini. And ten and told us that it will not work. I said okay. thank you and left. All right. So let me bring in Fatima to Abubakar. She's a deputy information minister. What's government's response to the scenes we've seen today at the protest? Good evening, Aisha, and to my co-panelists, uh, Dr. Esumi and Dr. Asa Sante, and Profening, and of course to my brother Bernard Mona. And I, I want to start by saying that uh, I, I am also so scandalized that uh, what I anticipated to be a very intellectual and beautiful conversation has been reduced to Bernard accusing the president of being violent because a protest that he, Bernard, led turned violent. I participated in Let My Vote Count Alliance demonstration. Justice Ajakuma is dead. I participated in Occupy Ghana demonstration, Bamuyada to Wongbo. And I can tell you for a fact, things happen. And fundamentally, what I have learned as an individual when it comes to this is collective responsibility. So is he trying to say that because people who participated in LMVCA demonstration died, so former president John Dramani Mahama is violent. I you think our conversation should should not start from Okay, let him that, let her finish. Let him land. That, Go ahead. That being, that being said, Aisha, as a lawyer, I know very well that the rights of every single Ghanaian guaranteed under Article 21, Clause 1D of the 1992 Constitution is said that everyone who wants to protest has the opportunity to do so in this country without anybody trampling upon their rights. But to every right comes with a responsibility. In this entire conversation, as leader, as a leader of the demonstration or one of the conveners of the demonstration, I haven't heard a sentence from Bernard which suggests that he also accepts some responsibility. Uh, who, he who comes to equity ought to come with clean hands. And I believe to lead a demonstration which is guided by the Public Order Act. And Aisha, if you may permit me, let me quote uh, section three, uh, subsection two of the Public Order Act to Bernard's hearing. And it reads, a person taking part in a special event shall obey the directions of the police officers guiding the proper movement of any other person and vehicles and generally to maintain order. That is the law from the Public Order Act. So when you reach out to people, invite Ghanaians to come out in their hundreds to join in a protest as leadership of the organizers of Arise Ghana also have the responsibility to educate and sensitize the protesters that we can do everything we want to do, but it should be within the remit of the law. That being said, Aisha, Three fundamental issues have led us to where we are today, and I would like to list them. First of all, clearly, the organizers of Arise Ghana and also the police service could not arrive at a, a consensus. It is the lack of consensus with regards to routes and also with regards to timing that led the police to file that application at the High Court. When the High Court gave a ruling, the High Court gave orders to the extent that the High Court prescribed where the demonstration should happen, what time it should happen. So there was clarity from stats. There was clarity that in order to have a peaceful demonstration, 
use these routes. We also recommend that officials from government will come and meet you at the Independence Square and pick your written petition or your petition, if any. Aisha, that being said, I heard some interviews from Mr. Thompson of ASEPA. I've heard some of the conveners. Even on your platform, I, I was watching the live coverage of the press conference organized by some of the conveners. And I want to establish these things. Arise Ghana did not appeal against the ruling of the High Court. Arise Ghana did not file for stay of execution against the ruling of the High Court. That being said, it means Arise Ghana was, if they wanted to embark on the demonstration today, were going to abide by whatever orders that the High Court had given. Mm. A party to the case, which is my brother Bernard Mona, filed a state of proceedings and also appealed to the Court of Appeal. Interestingly, the returning date for his application is on 12 July. 12 July. So if you were not satisfied with the ruling of the courts and you have filed for something that you, it, it was your hope that the appellate court will help you get the route you wanted to use and also get the time you wanted to get, you would have been patient enough to wait for the court to arrive at such a determination before you embark on your demonstration. Well, Bernard but Mona said that at the event, they agreed with the police. Unfortunately, we've been trying to get the police to speak to so we could get their side of the story, but we've been un unsuccessful. Let me bring in Dr. Patrick Assuming. He is a development economist. Now, looking at the current state of the economy, can some of the demands by these protesters, including demand for scrapping of some taxes, be handled by the economy? Uh, good evening and good evening to viewers. So, um, so you, at the beginning, you clearly showed uh, the petroleum price build up. And then you, able, you see that there are some taxes that are there. And then I think uh, my understanding is that one of the demands is also that they want uh, the yield to be withdrawn. So you can understand why you know, the, the economy is going through difficult times and the average Ghanaians are having some difficulties. So you think that if the government decided to remove some of those taxes, because, you know, fuel prices bite almost everybody. So any relief from there will, will, will help ordinary Ghanaians. But we also have to take a broader picture. I mean, look at the broader picture and think longer term. So if... We may do that today, and uh, to bring uh, fuel prices by around uh, three, three cities and 50 pesos or so. Mm. But if we have not addressed the fundamental challenges, the fundamental problems that are brought us here, you do that today, and three months down the line, we are back to 11 cities. Okay. So while some adjustment to the taxes may bring immediate relief, for me, I think the most important thing is to look at addressing the weaknesses within the Ghanaian economy. That has led to a point where the currency is sharply depreciating. And frankly, over the last few years, the economy is not doing well and it's not creating enough jobs for younger, for the youth. I think for me, that if so, if the demonstrators were making that kind of demand or requesting that government show a little bit more accountability, in terms of how public money is spent. I think that one will be a more sustainable solution to the current problems we have. We may decide to cut the taxes. The other thing is that if we cut taxes today, you know, the state of government finances is like that. It's just going to make it will go to lead to a situation where our, de our deficit will widen and our debt will widen. Ultimately, at some point down the line, we have to bring back taxes to pay off the debt. Mm. So I think there's every legitimate reason to ask and to demand that there's better accountability and better use of the taxpayers' funds, and also that the economy is better managed to ensure that we're on a sustainable path, that the currency gets strengthened, and also there's growth that leads to better employment opportunities for the youth. Mm. All right, Bernard, so um, Fatima made the point that it was you personally that went to the appeals court, uh, court of appeal and not 
Arise Ghana. You had earlier mentioned that when they were going to serve Arise Ghana, they served you in, instead and, and that you were not Arise Ghana. I'll come to you. Let me bring in Dr. Sasante. I'm, I'm grateful for your patience. Politically, what damage does such demonstrations cause to government? Because we've seen two already. Uh, we are just in the middle of 2022. We saw one for E-Levy. Now we're seeing one uh, for the general living standards. Uh, what does these uh, demonstrations, what damage does it cause to government? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Aisha, and good evening to your viewers and then my co-panelists. Um, from political perspective, there's nothing wrong if you want to demonstrate, to express certain grievances or drive home a point that you think those in authorities don't want to listen to. There is absolutely no wrong about that. Mm. Uh, but the mood doing it is that you have to do it within the remit of the law. If you look at the grievances that they listed out, um, uh, legitimate, of course, that yes, things are hard, um, economy is facing challenges, um, people struggle to make ends meet, and all the things they put out is a reflection of what they said, and it's a reality. Mm. Uh, whether we take it or not, it's a reality. Okay. But you can do that using public opinion tools, such as what demonstration, by courts, and so forth and so on. So they use one of the public opinion tools, which is what demonstration. Unfortunately, the ugly spectacle that we are seeing tonight is what I'm worried about, mm. and that it turned out to be this. I... Um, like what Professor Enning has said, I was also busy doing something, so I did not follow uh, what happened in town. But it's unfortunate that uh, it degenerated into uh, uh, that the level, the magnitude of the, the destruction and all that, that was so very unfortunate. Mm. But we are saying that in a democracy, it's always legitimate that people demonstrate, they express opinion, a very uh, you know, dissenting views, they are allowed to do that. But government must have very big stomach uh, to stomach this, and then we move on. Uh, so politically speaking, I believe that that should have been uh, the angle from which uh, all these things uh, should have, you know, arrived. But unfortunately, that is not uh, what uh, we have seen so far. Very unfortunate. Do, do you think that government has treated some of these uh, pro uh, protests or demonstrations well? And uh, the reason why we're seeing more of that? Um, a very difficult question because, you see, um, if you talk about government, uh, strictly speaking, when you are talking about who handles demonstration, then it is the police that come in, all right? More often than not, you see, uh, letters are written, permissions are sought, and all that. They agree, and then if they don't agree, they go to court. Uh, one way or the other, um, there is an amicable a solution that is found to the problem and then demonstrations are staged. Okay. Uh, but when people hit the street, uh, events tend to uh, take a different turn and then you see these things. It tells you that we need more education uh, to the masses, especially people who want to demonstrate and people who also have the power to handle security in this country. Mm. Right. We need to educate uh, both parties very well so that Demonstration should be peaceful, peaceful, because it is an important aspect of every democratic world, uh, uh, society, okay. that demonstrations are allowed and that demonstrators also operate within the remit of the law. Bernard, so um, earlier uh, Fatima made a point that you did not, uh, Arise Ghana as a group, did not go to court of appeal. It was you. But they were not served. As a person they were that not went served. to the court of appeal. They were not appeal. served. That is the irony of it. Okay. Because if you are, Arise Ghana is an amalgamation of various groups, individuals, including myself. Okay. And you decide that in going to court, Arise Ghana is first responded, Bernard Mona is second responded. Okay. I mean, then you should have tagged the other mm. members of Arise Ghana as also other respondents. But you singled me out okay. for whatever reason I don't know. Mm. And so when you serve me, I assume that you served second respondent. And so I have to take steps to redeem because you did not serve me in my capacity as a rice gunner when I'm being served myself. Mm. 
Right? Yeah. So I went to court on the basis of the fact that I was the one who was served. You didn't serve a right Ghana. Ask them whether they served a right Ghana. Mm. If they did not, assuming on Thursday I was not available to receive the sermons, mm -hmm. would they have served me? Or they would have gone to court to move the motion without us? Okay. So certainly, that is how it ended up. Number two, why? The police, this is not the first time. You remember when we were doing the picketing at Parliament House and we moved to Parliament House. Yeah. The police has secured a similar injunction mm. where the court asked that we should start for Kwame Nkrumah Circle. But the police knew that we had re-agreed with them that we were going to start at the Ifwa Sadaland Park. Mm. And so the police came to the Ifwa Sadaland Park and brought me their orders. And I said, ah, but why are you here then? Because the order is saying that we should start at Ifwa Sadaland Park, hey, a Kwame Nkrumah Circle. That is what you went to court to secure. Yeah. Meanwhile, we had had a prayer agreement that was restart at Ifwa Sadan Lampak. And you people have come here. Have you also violated the court orders? I asked the great Accra regional commander. Okay. So it does not matter because it is human beings that are in this. So anytime we can agree, we can decide that, okay, the court said this, but let's do this. So I asked the commander, should we now move back to Kwame Nkrumah Circle that day? and then start and come back to Parliament House. Then he said, no, once we are here. So if today you came, and we all agreed that, look, we will take this route, pass through Nima Police Station, get to the Akwaje Interchange, we will not go to the Flagstaff House, because mm. I don't know what special protection you are, okay. you think that that place have. Mm. We will go to uh, Independence Square, uh, what we call it, Ministries. Then you pick your phone, COP your but why did you seek to set aside what the court had said? Why? Because we are the demonstrators. We choose where we want to pass. Does the law say that somebody should vary us? If you vary us, it means that it is not our demonstration. It's your demonstration. But once it's in court, I'm you saying cannot, that it is your demonstration. You go contrary to we what are organizing said. our demonstration, and we say this is what we want to do. And you, but the police that is there you, to protect you. We, that so is the duty of the police. That, that is the duty. Shouldn't... And so when we agreed with the police this afternoon, after COP, Yohunu received the call. Mm. That is where the things turned murky. And see, after they received the call and were addressing the people, did you notice what happened? Mm. All the commissioners that are mentioned their names, all of them left the crowd. You were coming to lead us. Why did you leave? If the police, these professionals were there, these high officers were there, you think that the other ranks would have degenerated the, the, the demonstration? Mm. But they left. Why did they leave? Because they pre-staged this thing. They premeditated it. They wanted it to be done. And well, well there's a done. statement coming from the police, and I'll be sharing the statement with you shortly. And I must say that we've been trying to get the police to be part of this discussion. We couldn't get them. So this is a statement that they shared earlier on. Um, it's on the screen. Um, I will try and read them for you, but you can get, I'll, I'll read, I'll come back to the statement, but let's get, uh, let's be clear on the demands of your people, the demands that you, your group is asking for from government. Well, what, what we said is that we want an immediate withdrawal of the electronic transfers levies, which in our opinion is a, confiscating people's savings is eating into people's capital rather than promoting business environment. Okay. And it is actually even making the poor people worse off because most of the rural people that probably I could support, today I cannot send them Momo. Those who could also want to support me cannot send because of the charges. And mm. therefore, you are even impoverishing the already poor in society. Okay. And you are increasing the cost of living for them because things are already bad. You want to send somebody money to go and buy textbooks in school. When you send the money above 200 Ghana cities, they are going to deduct. When the person is also going to redraw the money or going to further transfer, they redraw. It's imposing a lot of hardship for us. Immediate redrawal of the electronic transfers levies, and we are fine. Number two, you are trying to reach, introduce the, what you would describe as the Ajapa, Ajapa deal. We call it Ajaboni deal. Mm. We say that don't make an attempt to bring it. Okay. We have seen that unemployment has moved from 6% to about 13%, mm. probably the highest in many years. We have seen that cost of petroleum products have reached a crescendo. Contrary to the past where we used to see people smuggling 
petroleum products from Ghana into neighboring countries. Today, it is the reverse, that people are smuggling petroleum products from Burkina Faso, from Cote d'Ivoire and Togo into Ghana because it's now cheaper in those countries as a result of the many taxes we have imposed here. So our Ghanaian people are getting more, more, more uh, uh, pain by this. We also are saying that, look, even cost of food has increased. And when we want to complain, cassava that we are eating, yam that we produce in our own country, you tell us that the effect is from Russia and Ukraine. As we sit here, majority of people cannot travel back to their own places. And um, some of your colleagues will tell me that, look, these days, they use their car, they just come and pack. They don't want to use it for lunch or any other thing because the cost of fuel has increased, impacting negatively. Mm. These things are happening at the time when our incomes are midget, our incomes are static, nothing is happening. And so, if, is it too much to demand of our government to show a little sympathy to its own citizens? Thankfully, the information minister, the deputy information minister, Fatma, is still here with us. On the score of the challenges Ghanaians are facing, does government have measures in place to actually ameliorate these challenges? Of course, Aisha, government has, uh, but before I come to that, uh, clearly some of the assertions that uh, my big brother has made in the studio is not supported by any statement that the Ghana Police Service have put out, that they rate an agreement outside what the High Court allowed. And he did not but also answer the... To that by okay, when she's done, I'll give you the opportunity. Why go, go ahead. Himself has gone to the Court of Appeal and has filed for stay, but was not patient enough to wait for the court to grant him that, but to go ahead to flout the, the ruling of the court and proceed to do what he wanted to do. Mm. That being said, Aisha, as you are aware, yesterday we used your platform to make some announcements that in March 2022, the finance minister, after a cabinet retreat, announced some reliefs for Ghanaians including 20% cut on government expenditure, including 10% cut, further cut on discretionary spending, including 30% cut in the salaries of ministers, deputy ministers, CEOs and appointees of this government, including the central bank making arrangements uh, with uh, industry players, multinationals who are here when it comes to their retention policy in terms of profits, among other things. This same government, about two weeks ago, launched the Development Bank Ghana, which we have invested over $750 million to make sure the public banks are able to assess some funds that they can give out to Ghanaian SMEs as long-term loans, all the way up to 15 years. There is no contention as to whether indeed these expenditure cuts have happened or not, or these salary cuts have happened or not. You would also remember that the price stabilization and recovery levy was zero rated several times last year, all the way to February this year. The sanitation and pollution levy was also zero rated from May 2021 to the year to May, November, 1st November 2021. The issue is that as we sit here from Monday, the senior presidential advisor, Honorable Yaosafumafo, the agri minister, the trade minister, the information minister, the transport minister, are uh, holding some stakeholder engagements on behalf of government to assess the impact of those reliefs that government put in place in March. And if they are inadequate, what else government can do to resolve the economic hardship on the part that government has control over? On the petroleum part, even though we are operating a deregulated market, you are aware that in April, government had to drop 15 pesos on the price builder. And I am saying this because, as Bernard is there, I, I, I have a lot of love for him. I have looked up to him in so many ways. I think I have even joined him to participate in demonstrations in the, in the, in the past. But Aisha, my point is that, you are asking for scrapping of all taxes and everything, but you are demanding that the same government should pay all salaries. In fact, you are saying government should increase salaries. In fact, you are saying after the NACO training, uh, training program ended in October 2021 and government is holding the over 67,000 trainees 
who did not get an exit plan. You said they should pay them. You said government should pay this, pay that. As a, a seasoned politician in the country, Bernard hasn't proposed anything as to how government can increase I revenue mobilization so that we can meet those shortfalls that will help us do all the things we can do. Well, Bernard, um, just briefly, uh, wrap it up for me. You said you wanted to respond to her. She says that you haven't proposed anything, first, yet you are demanding so much. First and foremost, I'm not the one who made the statement that we are sitting on money, but as a result of bad leadership, we are poor and we are hungry. President Akufuado said so. So the money that his predecessors were sitting on, that made us poor because of bad leadership. Good leadership should make sure that the money is available. I am not the one who said that I've worked at the Bank of Ghana before and that all the money we needed to develop this country is in Ghana and we didn't need to borrow. It is Vice President Baumia who said so. So if you don't know where to go and get the money, ask them that well, were they going to get the money that they said we were sitting on. Number two, it is your government that said that and we are helping you. In opposition, you said that you are going to move away from taxation to production. Today, if we are helping you to tell you that don't tax the economy because no country has taxed itself into prosperity and that your statement that moving the nation from pro uh, taxation to production is the way to go, resort to production and not taxation, have we demanded something wrong away from what you yourself have proposed as a solution? My dear sister Fatima, these are your own proposals. <laughs> Let me indicate. What did you expect the police to do? Whilst people were still struggling at the Kwame Nkrumah circle, the police had already gone to issue. But, but do you agree that your members have been disciplined? No, I'm saying that whilst we were still in the pain, whilst we were still in the heat of this, the police issued a statement. At what point in time, the, po the police, whilst all these things were going on, did they get the time to go and issue a statement to do what they have done? Doesn't that tell you that this statement was written long before even this started? Because but did, did they premeditated it. As I said, the commissioners of police that came there decided to walk away but, but, and to allow this thing to happen. But so do you agree me, that your members were indiscipline? You we saw were the not, police we were not, were destroyed. We were not. Let me tell you. I said, I saw them shooting at us. And I saw police persons who were in our... Uh, uh, listen. Who were also throwing back at the same police who were shooting at us. So if the police decide to throw at the police and you decide to molest us in the manner you have done, we know you plan this thing. But our determination to protest the hardship that, is, that has engulfed us, we will not stop. I'm Tomorrow is another time. day. Mm. We are meeting at the Elwax Sports Stadium. Instead of the 12 o'clock that we propose, we are meeting early so as to avoid any confrontation with the Ghana Police Service. If we have our two-day demonstration, we'll meet at Elwax Sports Stadium and we will embark on our peaceful demonstration. Grateful Hoping for your that time. The Bernard Mona, he is a member of the Arise Ghana group. I was also joined by Fatima Abubakar, she's Deputy Information Minister. Dr. Kwame Asasante is a political science lecturer at the uh, University of Ghana and also uh, director of the Center for European Studies. Dr. Assuming is a development economist. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. And Professor Kwisienin also joined us for this discussion. Thank you so much for watching. Enjoy the rest of our programs.